Hello, everyone. Please keep supporting Gene Valentino's Truth Podcast. We need our voice to get out there far and wide and help save our country. Hey there. Happy Valentino's Day. Well, Valentine's Day. It's coming up in a few days anyway. Don't forget my pillow, and don't forget that special someone. Well, you can get something special from my pillow at www.mypillow.com, promo code GeneV, up to 80% off on discounts. Go take care of that special summon in your life. Help us out. Help Mike Pillow. Happy Valentine's Day. Wow, that's a great intro to what we have in front of all our thousands of listeners this morning. 16 after 7, George Jones leads us into Gene Valentino. Yeah, and, and good morning. Gene is with us. Uh, Gene, Choices is the name of that song, George Jones. And that's funny because we have choices in our life. We have a lot of different, uh, you know, some people's lives turn out better than others because of choices that they make. And so, you know, we're all free to make the choices we want. Now, the last time a presidential election came around, the American people chose Joe Biden. And boy, was that a mistake. And I think everybody realizes it now. And we're going to get into that in just a minute. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, say hello. Yeah, okay. Have I, have I got you there? Yeah, I'm loud and clear. I hear you fine. Okay, good. want to make sure. All right. So I want to get into what happened yesterday with the Supreme Court. Now, it's not, it's not, I'm not this guy that loves to listen or watch court proceedings. I mean, they can be the most boring and dull thing. I mean, it's all technical, everything, you know, I mean, I could never have been a lawyer because <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's just, it's just a whole different world. But in any case, yesterday, I could not get enough of the Supreme Court hearing from the court uh, of, of Colorado, the Supreme Court of Colorado, that ruled that President Trump cannot be on the ballot in Colorado. They scoured these people with questions that I've, I mean, things I would have never thought of. And what was interesting is how many questions that seemed to be negative questions to the, to the state of Colorado that came from the liberal justices. What did you think? Oh, good morning. And thank you for leading with that question. That's exactly what has happened here. I woke up yesterday morning sipping my coffee and thinking about the Supreme Court, the third leg of our governance, the administrative, which is a debacle right now, the legislative branch, which sits in its own coma in the uh, deep state of the circle, the swamp, and uh, the last remaining leg on the triangle uh, of the chair is the um, is the judiciary, the judicial branch of our government, and we watched Obama appointed, Biden appointed Supreme Court justices put aside petty politics and coalesce with the re other justices to look at facts objectively as it relates to the incidences that occurred in Colorado, which have been a complete review of the 14th Amendment, and they stood up and asked some pretty obvious questions, didn't they? They stood up and asked about the merits of uh, what was going on uh, in, um, in, in Colorado's thinking about their their justification of why Donald Trump should be removed from the Colorado ballot. The 14th Amendment was designed, going back to 1860s and 1870s, to restrict officers and elected people in Congress. But the justices clearly stated, and it was uh, Justice Sotomayor, that came out and said, well, now, wait a minute. I don't clearly see that this pertains to the president. Justice Kagan and Justice um, Kamaji Jackson said the same thing. These are Democrat, liberal appointed justice, justices. And as a consequence, we now see all of the justices coming together and 
properly looking at the Constitution with no blinders on, with, with, with just pure objectivity. And this is the best thing that's happened for our democracy. I believe after the Supreme Court's broadcast of their hearing yesterday, we see the sustaining and the protection and the third leg of this system protecting the other two legs, democracy in general, and the state of this nation. Yeah, I I agree 100%. The the Supreme Court might actually be the only part of government the you know you got the judicial branch which is what they're in the executive branch the president and the legislative branch but they may be the only ones that are actually doing what they're supposed to do uh with uh, with regard to uh, fidelity to the constitution of the united states and so when you heard those questions yesterday and the colorado attorney i kind of almost felt sorry for him you know, you get your big day in court and, you know, I mean, he get his, he got national attention from this. I mean, it won't hurt him. He's, you know, as many lawyers, he's trying to make the case for his client and he didn't do a good job. He couldn't answer those questions very well. And do, do you think that the reason why was not because he's not a good lawyer, but because there was no answer? Well, that's it. Exactly. Uh, you know, Michael, by nine, by eleven forty-two Eastern Time yesterday morning, we watched Reuters come out with a statement that co- that coincided with what the justices were saying, uh, with emphasis that uh, you know this Fourteenth Amendment uh, is to protect the national structure of our election process. Okay, the states can manage the election process. But there is consistency and uniformity that's expected nationwide. How can you have some states removing the candidate from the ballot and then other states keeping them on? This is the yeah. beginning of the end of a democracy if right. the states think they have the arrogance, the liberal arrogance, uh, the Ivy League arrogance to impose such a one sided vitriol and hate against Donald Trump because watch out folks if that got off the ground and that happened the door would swing back the other way and we'd have a complete takedown of our democracy when the Republicans do what's uh, natural and that's to retaliate and that is exactly what one of the justices pointed out I believe it was Kavanaugh that said that look what would stop Another state who has a different idea about what uh, Joe Biden has done and claims that he's not eligible. And so then you have only two or three states that didn't get involved that decide a presidential election. That's not the way a democracy, especially the United States Republic, is supposed to work. So the, the justices, I think, ask those real simple questions that were never taken up by these uh, politicos. I mean, the judges in this case are obviously political operatives. Yeah. That's what they are. So watch out, Michael. In the next two to four weeks, we're going to watch the Supreme Court come up with a rush decision. If it's not a unanimous 9-0, it's probably 8-1. to But now I think it's going to be unanimous. And I think uh, the Supreme Court um, Justice John Roberts... Uh, will be um, writing the opinion that he gets his other eight justices uh, to sign into uh, uh, jointly. It really sets the state. I'm glad you led with this question this morning, Michael, because Joe Biden's reckless commentary last night on the news, as crazy as it was, as inflammatory as it was, is really second in line to the major concern I've had for this nation, the takedown of this nation, if our Supreme Court had not stepped up yesterday through their actions and their words to protect the integrity of our democracy at the federal level. I'm thoroughly convinced that this was the important thing for them to do and to focus on. Remember, we have talked in the past 
about the Democrat that th- we would be seeing in 2024 the takedown of the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party has been pushing this stooge puppet called Joe Biden up into the foreground. So the puppeteers behind him, the deep state behind him, can manipulate him through 2024. What they didn't expect is his cognitive decline getting so serious so soon prior to November 2024. Oh, let's just put him in there and we'll control him for four years beyond. No way, Jose. This has gone over the top. And this is another example. I hope America sees the true fraud. The true fraud is the perversion of the Democrat Party taking down the legitimacy of your comments and my comments, freedom and liberty and free speech being stifled as they try to control the narrative and shift the governance to a socialistic, communistic society in the decade ahead. All a distraction while the border slips in with 12 million people, some hundreds of thousands of them undocumented terrorists, and while we continue to pay through your taxes and mine, they're, just think of this, we're taking those our tax dollars to get them to have the privilege of going to college, and people in college can't even find a way of funding their own way through college on their own, but Biden's willing to forgive a debt that takes us over $34 trillion that we're going to conf- be confounded to figure out how to pay for. Yeah, I mean, look, I agree with you 100%. But back to the subject of what happened last night, which we which we led off with, uh, you know, Joe Biden went on air last night, and, and that's unusual for him to be on in prime time because he's usually in bed by then. But... <laughs> They they wanted him to come out, and they wanted him to show that his memory is great, right? I I, I you know, he even had a little. Actually, I thought it was funny, a little interaction with Peter Ducey, where he said, "Hey, my memory's so bad, I forgot that I didn't want to call on you." Basically, <laughs> yeah. And so it was funny, but at the same time, he he he's angry, he's mad because he's caught, and he also. Couldn't couldn't tell you the name of or, or, or the country that the president of Egypt represents. He said Mexico. Let's open the doors. I got Mexico to open the gates. Well, he you know that was maybe a Freudian slip because he he definitely has the gates open for Mexico, so he knows that in his mind somewhere. But he couldn't even get that right. Special counsel. And yeah, go ahead. How angry he was. Yeah. He was mad. And that's a, a sign of somebody who who actually is not all cognitively there. That's he doesn't right. understand the gravity of, of what he had to do last night. Medical experts will tell you that's a sign of cognitive decline. But what really bothers me is the special counsel, Robert Herr. His report was so devastating against Biden that it is now backfired. They have shown in full plain view that by exposing his cognitive decline in an official report that he has illegally, he has violated the law by suppressing the issues of of classified documents in his garage and elsewhere, it's grounds for him to be removed. And so now (laughs) they don't want to hurt an elderly man who's cognitively declining, so let's just push him out. No, the 25th Amendment may come forward, and we may see some movement moving faster than slower to remove him from office prior to November 2024. I was expecting uh, Biden to become the lame duck for uh, uh, Trump in 2024, but the evidence now shows he's so adversely impacted with cognitive decline that the Democrats are scrambling to figure out what they're going to have to do to save their party and to find an alternative for that office prior to November. Exactly. 
And so we will wait and see, but I'm not so sure at this point, Joe Biden will be the nominee come August. But anyway, thanks for joining. Appreciate you. Best of you, buddy. Have a good week.